What if I told you this entire 3D environment was built with just a bunch of images, some math, and a bit of JavaScript? Just clean HTML, CSS, and GSAP. Hello, developers. As a UI developer, I've always been obsessed with building immersive experiences. How can a flat image layout suddenly feel 3D? How do we create depth, distance, and rotation when the browser doesn't even understand perspective by default? Is it just transform translate? Or is there more to it, like balancing real-time cursor input with individual speed values? In this video, I'll break down the core logic behind this 3D parallax effect, including how each element calculates its position dynamically, the custom dataset attributes controlling speed and distance, the math that gives depth, rotation, and movement, all based on cursor location, and finally, how we use GSAP to animate everything on page load, like a cinematic intro. This isn't just about effects, it's about teaching your UI how to react like a living scene. And if you want the full source code, let's make a deal. If this video hits 150 likes, I'll pin the source code link right in the comments. All right, let's head straight into the HTML structure because everything starts with how we layer the mountains, fog, and text. We're starting directly from the body tag because that's where the 3D magic begins. First up, the main tag, this acts like our stage. Think of it as the container that holds the entire scene, the fog, the mountains, the text, all of it. We've set its height to fill the full viewport because we want the scene to feel like a complete canvas, not just a part of the page. Inside main, we have a single wrapper div with the class data, and this is where all the individual parallax elements live. The fog, the mountains, the sun rays, even the title, everything is a child of this data wrapper. Now here's where things get clever. Each image element inside. Data has a class of parallax and is layered using absolute positioning. But more importantly, they all have custom attributes like data speed X, data speed E, data speed Z, data rotation, and data distance. What does that mean? Each image literally knows how fast it should move on each axis. It's like each layer has a personality. Some move faster on X, some on Z, and some barely move at all. That's how we build the illusion of depth. Let's look at an example. Take this fog image, img fog underscore seven dot png. With data speed x of 0.27 and data distance of 850. That tells the JavaScript, hey, I'm not the closest layer. Move me slowly when the mouse moves and make sure I appear a bit deeper in space. And just like that, you've added a fog layer that feels like it's floating in 3D space. Then we have the mountains. Each one is stacked with increasing distance values from mountain 10 to mountain one, creating the classic parallax depth effect. The farther the distance, the slower and deeper the movement, it's visual storytelling in layers, and then right in the middle, the text block. It's the only element that's interactive. It's wrapped inside a div with class text, and yes, it's also a parallax layer. You'll notice this one has almost no Z movement. Why? Because it needs to stay readable, stable, like a caption floating in your 3D movie. The headings, H2 and H1, give the location, Zhangjiaku, China. A little poetic, isn't it? Final touches? We've got some hidden layers, like the sun rays, black shadow, and a vignette overlay. These enhance the visual drama and mood, but they're initially hidden and only fade in later through animation. Think of them like lighting and shadows in a movie set. Invisible at first, then bam, everything looks cinematic. So to recap this structure, main is our canvas. Data is the container holding every visual layer. Each IMG is a depth-aware parallax element with its own speed and distance. And the text block adds the center message, stable and focused. It looks simple in code. But when combined with CSS positioning and JavaScript transforms, this structure becomes a dynamic 3D scene. Let's now move to the next part, how all of this is layered, positioned, and styled in CSS, including how we use Z-index, absolute placement, and calculated offsets to fake real-world perspective. All right, now that the HTML structure is done, let's decode how the entire scene comes to life visually using CSS. We start at the top with the usual suspects, the universal selector, the font import, and box sizing rules. Nothing fancy here, just a clean setup to keep layout bugs in check. 
Next, the body tag. We apply the Poppins font family to give the UI a smooth, modern look. That's the only typography tweak in this entire layout. No distractions, just vibes. The main tag is where it gets interesting. We make it fill the full screen using 100VH and 100VW. And then we clip all scroll with overflow hidden. Why? Because this layout isn't meant to scroll. It's built for mouse movement and animation, not vertical scroll. Now let's talk about the parallax class. This is where we set the ground rules for all parallax elements. Pointer events, none, disables interaction. Transition, 0.4, five seconds cubic bezier, gives us buttery smooth animation on movement. This transition is what makes the mouse movement feel fluid, not jumpy. Now we dive into the big collection of individual layers. Every image, from fog to mountain, is absolutely positioned, anchored to the center using calc 50% plus offset for both top and left. These calculated values allow us to center elements loosely, but push them slightly forward or backward depending on their depth. Each layer also has its own Z-index. That's how we control the stacking order, like stage props placed at different depths from the camera. For example, BGIMG is set way back with a Z-index of 1. The closer you move to the viewer, the higher the Z-index climbs, up to 21 with Fog 1. This creates that beautiful layer sandwich we see when the scene moves. And yes, the images have different sizes too. Some are scaled massive like 30,200 px wide. Others are medium sized, carefully adjusted to simulate depth and distance visually. The text block is the center of focus, also positioned absolutely in the center, but with text align, center, and uppercased text. Nothing fancy here, except for its Z index priority. It sits at nine, right between the foreground and midground layers, just enough to pop without breaking the scene. Then we hit the sun rays, shadows, and vignette layers. These are like filters and lighting in Photoshop, sun rays and black shadows sit at the very top. Vignette uses a radial gradient background, fading from transparent in the center to black on the edges, making the whole thing feel more cinematic. Also pointer events, none ensures that none of these layers block your mouse events. Now, the responsive part. We adjust the heading sizes gradually. There's nothing complex here, just making sure the title doesn't break layout on smaller devices. This layout is desktop focused by nature, but we've made sure it stays visually clean across breakpoints. So what's the big picture here? Every image is layered like a paper cut scene, positioned precisely using top left calculations, given depth using Z index and transform perspective, and animated smoothly with transitions and JavaScript control. It's minimal CSS, but every line exists to support one thing, cinematic motion. Now that we've layered the visuals, let's dive into the real engine behind this project, the JavaScript logic, where things move, rotate, and respond to your mouse like a living environment. All right, developers, now it's time to lift the curtain and reveal the true magician behind this 3D parallax effect. That magician is JavaScript. This logic turns a stack of flat images into a living, responsive 3D environment. And the way it works is so clever, you'll wish you thought of it yourself. Let's go step by step. Step one, selecting all parallax elements. First, we begin by selecting all the visual elements we want to animate, those background fogs, mountains, and even the title text. To do this, we grab every element that carries the class named parallax. Why? Because each of those layers has custom speed values defined in their HTML and our script needs to access those values to decide how each element should move. We also target the main container to calculate its dimensions if needed, though in this specific case, the main reference helps anchor things visually. Step two, setting up the mouse movement variables. Now, before we move anything, we need to track the user's mouse position, so we create three variables. The first holds the horizontal cursor distance from the center of the screen. The second holds the vertical distance from the center. And the third calculates how much we should rotate the scene based on how far the cursor has moved left or right. These three values, horizontal, vertical, and rotation degree, become the foundation of all our transform calculations. Without them, the parallax effect wouldn't feel interactive. Step three, the update function. Now comes the main engine. 
a function that updates the position of every parallax element on the screen. This function receives the cursor position as input and then loops through each visual element one by one. Here's what it does for every element. First, it reads the custom speed values from the element's data attributes. These include horizontal speed, vertical speed, z-depth speed, rotation speed, and distance. Then it checks, is this element on the left half of the screen or the right? This is important because depending on its position, the same cursor movement will affect the layer differently. For example, when your mouse moves to the right, elements on the left need to shift one way, elements on the right need to shift the other way. This is how we simulate camera rotation. Now comes the magic calculation. We calculate how far the element should move along the z-axis based on the cursor's distance from the center and whether the element is on the left or right. This gives us a value that controls how deep or shallow the element appears, almost like adjusting the zoom of a lens, but for only that layer. Then we apply a transformation. This is where all that math turns into movement. Each element is transformed in four ways. It is moved forward or backward using perspective and z-depth. It is rotated left or right depending on how far the cursor has traveled. It is moved horizontally. And it is moved vertically. Each of these movements is multiplied by its respective speed value, which gives each layer its own motion signature. So fog might move slowly, mountains might shift a bit faster, and the text might barely move at all. Together, it creates that smooth layered motion that feels like true depth. Step four, initial update. Before we listen to any cursor movement, we call the update function once, with zero as the initial cursor position. This ensures the elements are positioned correctly even before the user interacts. It's like setting the stage before the play begins. Step five, listening to mouse movement. Now we add a listener for when the user moves their mouse. Every time the mouse moves, we check if any animations are currently running. If yes, we pause the updates. This prevents weird jitter or interruption. If no animations are running, we calculate the new horizontal and vertical distance from the center. And we also compute how much to rotate the scene. Then we call the update function again, but this time with live cursor input. This is how the scene responds dynamically as the user moves their mouse. Step six, the GSAP timeline. Now let's talk about that buttery entrance animation. At the bottom, we create a GSAP timeline. This timeline controls how each layer animates into view when the page loads. Here's how it works. First, we go through every visual element that does not belong to the text block. These are our mountains, fogs, and backgrounds. For each of them, we animate their vertical position. Specifically, we move them from a position based on their distance data, making it feel like they are falling into place. This creates that epic camera fly-in effect, like you're zooming into the scene from far away. Then, we animate the text. The heading appears from below the screen. It moves upward until it settles right in the center. The subheading fades in and lifts gently, adding that professional cinematic reveal. And finally, the hidden layers, like the sun rays, shadows, and vignette, fade in smoothly, completing the atmosphere. All of these animations are timed with GSAP sequencing logic, so everything flows naturally and feels unified. So what's happening under the hood? Every element has a brain. It knows how to move, how fast, and in which direction, all based on how you move your mouse. And that brain is powered by a single JavaScript engine that's surprisingly elegant. This is where creativity meets math, where structure meets storytelling. If this explanation helped you visualize how depth and motion work in sync, drop a comment below saying, depth unlocked or better. Tell me how you'd extend this effect. Add characters, add snow, add flying birds. Let's brainstorm together in the comments. And there you have it, a fully interactive 3D parallax scene built with just HTML, CSS, and a bit of creative JavaScript. No frameworks, no heavy libraries, just layers, motion, and logic, working together like a well-directed movie scene. We didn't just build a cool effect. We learned how to control motion with data-driven attributes, calculate perspective-based transforms, animate a full scene using GSAP timeline logic, and make it all respond smoothly to live mouse input. This is the kind of front-end magic that separates good UIs from wow UIs. Before you go, if you want the full source code, Let's make a deal. If this video hits 150 likes, I'll pin the source code link right in the comments. 
If this tutorial helped you understand depth and interactivity in a new way, hit the like button. It genuinely helps the channel grow. And if you want more UI animation breakdowns like this, subscribe and check out the link in the description for the full playlist. Thank you for watching. Keep creating magical UIs. And I'll see you in the next video.